Yeah. <laughs> oh, what up, friend? I hope you're all doing well. Over the last couple of videos, we've spent a lot of time talking about Delve. Delve has been a really hot topic of discussion. And we've been talking about different ways to Delve, things to do in Delve, items to look for in Delve, and pretty much a lot of the interesting facts about Delve in itself. One of the most interesting questions that I keep getting from players is, how do I get started? Can my build Delve? Should I be Delving? How deep can my build go? And pretty much people just want to know, how do you research a Delve build? How do you even look into or get started? Playing before you, you see your two different types of Delve builds. You see the Arcanist brand Eye of Winter, and you'll see the Molten Striker. There's also Bone Shatter. In a previous video, I showed you guys Spark Trickster, and pretty much a lot of different builds can Delve. It's just a matter of how deep you want to go and what stage of Delve you want to get to. And what I mean by that is, do you want to stay in the earlier depths of Delve and Darkness Farm? Do you want to go deep, deep Delve and try to like push as far as you can go for rare fossils and bosses or do you just want to get to that magical 600 spot where bosses and fossils start to show up more often there's also players who like to get to around the 12 1300 to cap out their soul fight and there's like i said all different stages of delve now it just comes down to you as the player and how deep you want to go and where you want to get and pretty much we want to figure out the best way to do it now I'm going to spend today, I'm going to talk to you about how I personally research Delve builds, how I use PoE Ninja, and how I kind of search around to see what I want to play in, just the kind of research that I would do. Now, if you're very fluent in PoE Ninja, or you're very fluent in doing a lot of research, then maybe this video isn't fully for you, but if you want to figure out some tips and tricks, or you want to look into how things are researched, how to tell if something's good, how to tell if something's bad, and just figure out how to progress the build in itself, then... Stick around to the end as we kind of like talk through and look through a bunch of different things. Now, if you have questions about Delve or you want to talk about Delve or you really want to share a really cool build about Delve, don't hesitate to leave a comment down below. I've been streaming Delve pretty much exclusively the last couple of days. I plan on streaming more Delve and, you know, I really encourage you guys to start a conversation about Delve down below or in the Discord or come on over by the stream because I'd love to hear your thoughts. But for now, let's kick over and take a look at PoE Ninja. Now, a lot of you guys are familiar with the site and how it works. A lot of people really use it for currency tracking. But if you haven't or you're not really too familiar with it, up on the top here, there's a button called Builds. And if we click it, it'll allow us to see all the different builds and the percentage of players that are playing what different kinds of builds at what stage in the league. Currently looking at this, we see a lot of people are playing Tornado Shot. There's a lot of Righteous Fire. There's a lot of Explosive Trap. There's just pretty much a lot of things going on. And you can see there's a time machine snapshot and we can look at different sections of the league. Now, that's not what we're here to do today. Today, we want to look at something very interesting, something a little bit different. Under our ladder bar right here, we have depth. And this is what we're going to be doing. Now, this is the exact same steps that I took when I researched my Delver for, for um, BPL. And I just kind of wanted to share these steps with you. If I click on depth and I sort everything by depth, Step, we can see just how deep the players with public profiles are <clears throat> now a lot of delvers keep a lot of their information hidden a lot of delvers don't want to share what they're doing but there's a lot of players that are in the 8,000 6,000 range and they pretty much just are willing to share and showcase very publicly what they're doing and it's up to us as the player to decipher what they're doing and if what we want to do now, we're going to ignore this one. This is an outlier. We'll talk about this one specifically, but we can see there's Molten Strike. There's Splitting Steel. That actually sounds really kind of cool. There's more Storm Brand. There's Temp Chain. Ooh, that sounds really cool, too. There's Lightning Strike. There's Bone Shatter. There's Eye of Winter. And you can see all the different types of builds there are. Now, before we go into this, assuming you have no experience at all, you've never delved before, you've never delved, and you don't know what to do, well, the steps that I would take would be the following. I would not open up a POB and be like, oh my God, what is this? How do I get this? I would never do that. Now, what I would do is instead of sorting by the current depth that players are at, I would look at my time machine. I would revert everything way far back. Now, if it was me and I wanted to start delving right away, I would go as far back as day three, day four, and I would sort by depth and I would just kind of take a look at what people are doing. 
And by doing this right away, we see that Bone Shatter is on top, followed by a Val Reap, a Fire Trap, and a Val Blight. Now, if you're more of an experienced Delver, or you're more experienced or have a little bit of currency to back you, maybe these steps aren't for you, but this is what I would do, and this is exactly what I did. Now, I would take the profiles of these three guys and just kind of take a look at them. And then I would kind of search around and see any other skill that really kind of stood out to me. For example, this Vortex player at 366, this Fire Trap player down here. And I would just kind of take a look at what players are doing. Now, there's Val Detonate Dead. I know I don't like Val Detonate Dead, so I'm not going to look at it. But that might be something that you want to look at. Now, overall, these players are not very deep, and assuming that I've never delved before, I really just kind of want to take a look and just kind of compare what they're doing so that I have a gauge of where I'm going. Now, we see right away that Bone Shatter has a two-handed axe. It has a fourth vow. It's got a really interesting helmet, some nice gloves. And you kind of get a feel by just, like, pulling up their POBs on what they're doing. Same thing for this guy. Looking at Bone Shatter again, he's got a nice two-handed axe. A natural affinity small cluster we check they both have the same cluster we can like see these and we can double check if these are the same and we start doing our due diligence and our, and our research on what's good and what's bad now we've noticed right away this guy has dawn striders this guy has rare glo or rare boots over here we have an eternal struggle same thing in eternal struggle the magnate but a stygian vice and you start to piece together and get an understanding of like what the differences are in gear and at the depths that we're looking at if we look at the difference between number one and number two, we see there are about a hundred delve difference. And if you know anything about delve, that's a pretty large margin. And the difficulty level scales every like 50 or hundred down that you go all the way up to like 6,000. So we kind of get an idea. And then if we want to go look at the third guy also playing Bone Shatter, we could start to see a lot of similarities. The Tanuahis, the two-handed weapon, the magnate belt, the natural affinity, the large cluster. And we start to piece together what Bone Shatter looks like. Now, assuming we don't want to do Bone Shredder anymore, we could kind of take a look at what other players are doing. We see there's a nice Vortex guy. We could take a look at the wand that he has, the body armor, the helmet, and we start to just kind of really get an idea. Now, for me personally, I highly recommend Bone Shatter. It is a very comfortable delving skill. It can get you very deep, very cheap, and it feels really good. But I really encourage you to do this and just kind of take a look at the different players like this fire trap guy we could see that he made it down into the 400s and you really get a good feel for how things are going now assuming that you can get your build down to the 600s or the 400s and the 500s and you want to keep going you would kick this up a little bit further we'll say week two and then we'll kind of just essentially do the same thing now we notice right away from day four day three all the way to week two our players have jumped drastically once again, we see Bone Shadow at the top, Phantasmal Cremation. Wait, what the heck is this, Valgris? Oh, this guy's armor stacking already. Holy crap. That's crazy. That was Molten Strike. Oh, that's so cool. But you see right away that Bone Shatter is like pretty much king. So if you're like, oh, where do I go? What do I do? How do I do this? You pretty much like start to get a really good idea of what is scaling very well at deeper delves. This, this, I want to look at this. This, this sounds really cool. What the heck is this guy doing? Doom Blast. Okay. Okay. That's kind of cool. A little different. That's kind of cool. And doing this just gives you ideas and gives you perspective and gives you depth on what you can do, what you can't do. Now, if you're solo self found, you can do the exact same thing where you change this to solo self found. And you can look at day four, day five, and you can just kind of really get a feel for like how deep you can get as fast as you can get. Now, I'm going to give you some really good examples in a second, and we're just going to go back to Ancestor League, and we're going to kick it to week six or week eight to the latest snapshot. If we're looking at latest snapshots, and like I said, this tornado shot, we're going to just take a look at number one and number two, number three, and number four. So... This guy's number two. We see right away he's playing Tornado Shot. But if we kick it back a week, and this is why I tell you guys to do your research, we see right away that he is actually not Tornado Shot. He is Eye of Winter Brands. So one big tip that I'm going to print out, or that I'm going to put out, and my buddy, if he watches this video, he'll know right away. POE Ninja takes snapshots of builds at specific times of the day. If that build that is taking a snapshot on, say, the Delve ladder doesn't seem like it makes sense, there's a good chance that that player has done something to alter what you are seeing. 
so that it's not exactly what you want it to be. So for example, we know that Neurotox has not has stopped delving. He wants to go do tornado shot. We've confirmed this with chat. We've talked to a bunch of people and this gentleman wants to go play tornado shot. So he has converted his delver all the way over, but this character is knee deep in the 7,000s. So we need to go back and do our research on this character. Cool. So <laughs> rank two we saw was playing Arcanus brand Eye of Winter. Number one is an armor stacker. Number three is playing, what the heck is he doing? Val Venomshire. Oh, that's so cool with strength stacking stuff. And number four is Mario playing Bone Shatter. Now I'm going to use Mario's POB. I've talked to this gentleman before. He's absolutely a pleasure to talk to you. And he's very helpful and very willing to share information. Now we saw if we look at the day one ladder and we're doing our research and we look by depth, we could see where players are. We could do our day two research and we could see where players are and we could do this for every week. And if you do this for every week, you'll notice that this gentleman's delving is on top of the leaderboard the entire way. And you say to yourself, wow, I really want to delve. How does this guy do it? How do I get this gear? How did he make it this deep? And how do, how do I replicate this? And what do I do? Well, I gave a good friend of mine this same advice and he started like this and he's practicing delve this league and it's going very well for him as he's hitting a lot of humps and he's learning to overcome it. If you've never delve before, delve itself can be very taunting. It can be very hard. It can be very difficult. There's a lot of humps that you have to get over and a lot of really weird things that wouldn't make sense normally to you that until you're in the moment or until you're trying to experience it, just don't kind of click. So the next couple of steps that I'm going to give you are the next little tips. I really recommend that if you want to start delving, especially for next league, maybe try to give this a go. We have another month and a half left in this league, depending on when you're watching this video, or even in this information, if you catch this video in the middle of any other league, this kind of information still holds strong. The big thing to notice is assuming you see this video in the future and tattoos still don't exist. I mean, you could still kind of do the same thing. Just do your research and do your due diligence on double checking and triple checking everything on the current ladder and the state of the game. Now, day one, we know we want to copy what this gentleman is doing for Bone Shatter, and we see exactly where he was on day one in terms of gear. I would say that if you were going to delve and you were going to start, start on day one and try to replicate his gear. And while you're replicating his gear on day one, kind of go back to the time machine and see if you can spot him on the ladder and where he is and how deep he was. Now, if we look at day one right away, we actually don't see him on the ladder, but if we go to day two and we start looking at day two, we see that by day two of the league, at the end when the snapshot was taken, he was depth 384. So that kind of gives us an idea of where we want to go and just kind of how we want to do this. Now, if I set my day two gear when this snapshot was taken, we can see the gear that he was working with. So if you've never delved before and you need to have a start or an idea of how to get there, you can actually spend some time and replicate this gear. Now, if you're not big into vines or you're struggling to make some money or you don't have really good currency strategies, we have a lot of videos on this stream that'll get you there and help teach you. Or you can come by the Discord and ask for some help or some tips or anything like that to just kind of get you to this stage to get rolling. Now, Day one in a league start or day two in a league start, gear like this might be a little bit difficult to come by without some crafting knowledge or some help or some understanding of the game. So don't be too panicked. Don't be too upset. Do your best to just kind of get an idea of where you're going. Ideally, though, you don't match this exactly on day two of the following league that you're watching this video, but this should give you an idea of how to scale your character and how to build it and how deep you can go with certain sets of gear. So we see on day two, he's 300 and change. He's got a nice six link ax. He's got a very mediocre helmet. He's got a nice body armor, a really nice amulet, some good rings, a really well rolled Stygian vice. He's got a timeless jewel. And you can just kind of get an idea of where he's going with his build, what it's doing, and just how deep it, it could push. So I would say if you built this gear and you put this all together, try to get down to 350, 360, maybe not 380, but if you can get into the 350s, 340s, and you're pushing and you're comfortable, you should go a little bit further and see how far this gear can take you. As soon as you hit a wall or as soon as you hit a nice stopping point and your gear isn't being able to let you progress, then we get to kick it up and go a little bit further. Now, these delvers who are delving all of the time, these delvers who are pushing the ladder, they will progress on the delve ladder faster than you and I will because they're used to it, they've done it, they know how to do it, and they keep going. 
as you see we kick it up to day three and at the end of day two we were 300 and change and at the end of day three we're 683 it's a big jump in like one day like that's that's a that's a big jump now if we go from day two we see the axe went from a vowel axe to a despot axe we see the armor is now five links we see the helmets a little bit more well crafted we have new gloves compared to the old gloves we got rid of the head of cores we have a nice new amulet we have two clusters we have the natural affinity we have a watcher's eye and something really important to note that like well i guess you're going wow day three his gear is insane gear like this watcher's eye which is like one modded you know purity of fire or an elemental a purity of elements determination so i guess it's two modded gear like this is cheaper early in the league especially for delvers delver gear or delving gear is very niche and very refined it gets very expensive very quick so if you have a plan and you've been practicing and you know what kind of gear you want aiming for things like natural affinity with corrupted blood aiming for a timeless jewel aiming for a watcher's eye aiming for the clusters all of this on day three day four day five week one is a lot cheaper than if i were to go buy this stuff now so just something to keep in mind that these guys already have a plan they know what gear they're looking for and this is why we're doing this research and why this video exists to kind of show you guys like what your gear should look like how you research the gear how deep you should be able to figure out you can go and just kind of give you guys an understanding now my buddy managed to mimic this gear again and managed to push down into the 500s he had no problem he learned a lot about delve and then he started to hit walls and have issues and this is why you do this and this is why you practice this and this is why you learn this so we see that mario gets a 683 we see this gets, this guy gets the 560 this is bone shatter again we see this guy once again 549 bone shatter again and then you decide you're going to want to try to bone shatter so you look at mario's gear you look at this guy's gear and you start start to compare the differences between the gear we see the magnate versus the stygian the tanu ahis versus the basic gloves the eternal struggle on both characters both of these helms are crafted with fizz taken as fire and we take a look at the third guy, the Tanu Ahi, he's the magnate. And you can start to see the resemblance in the gear and you can see where things are going and how they're progressing and how you should be building and what you should be doing. Now, when you hit a wall and you get stuck and you don't know how to give it a hump of this gear and what to do, that's where things like the Discord come in, the comment section down below, and just asking other people who are delving and doing your research on like, oh my God, I can't kill the soul or oh my God, I can't kill this avocado boss or oh my God, what do I do and how do I get over this hump and why is it stuck? And what am I doing wrong? And how do I do it? And how do I kill the boss? And what's going on? And holy crap, and what now? Who the hook? And it just becomes overwhelming and crazy. But as soon as you learn it and you figure it out and you understand it, then we can go to the next steps and get over the hump. Delve is going to be hard. It is going to be a struggle. It is going to be a huge pain in the ass. And I feel like I'm rambling in circles, but I need that point to just sink in that there is a lot of research that has to be done with Delve. Delve is not your one button click and be done. Delve is a very profitable, amazing place to learn the game and teach you a lot about it now if you're like oh delve's not profitable or i don't make money delving we could save all the profits about delve and how to make money delving and how lucrative delving is and save that for another video you guys just let me know in the comments if that's something you want to talk about so we put the gear together it's day three we get to 500 we can't kill all we don't know what to do our friend calls us an idiot our friend tells us to press molten shell stand still stop panicking we kill all we progress feels good as soon as you get over that hump and you get to the 600s and you start going and you start pushing and you realize all these fossils start showing up and all these bosses start showing up and you get a little bit deeper and it gets a little bit harder and a little bit deeper and it gets a little bit harder you start to find your niche and your groove and kind of like start to figure out what you want to do now it doesn't have to be bone cheddar it can be spark trickster it could be the arcanist brand and pretty much i encourage you guys to use poe ninja and to do your research and they just kind of see how builds evolve so you see, we go from an ax to a better ax to a one-hander and a shield. Now I know somebody's gonna be like, oh my God, on day four, how do you get all that gear? He actually found a mirror really early on in Delve. So he was able to buy all this gear and transition really quick. But you could start to get an idea too of like where your gear should be, where you should be going. And it just kind of gives you like a direction. Assuming nothing's changed in this video from this leak to the next leak, assuming all of the clusters and everything still stays the same and Bone Shatter doesn't get nerfed, it's just a really good blueprint of where to go. It gives you an idea of what Forbidden Flames and Forbidden Flesh is that I need to keep an eye out for, what kind of impossible escape, 
what kind of lethal pride, what kind of watch design, and the research that you do now preps you for next league and gives you a shopping list ahead of time before everybody else. A lot of Delvers already know what they're looking for. I mean, I personally have my own list of gear that I plan on. This league alone, if you're watching this in Total League or you're watching this in the future, in Total League, I bought this shield on day two, ready to go. I bought an Ashes really early, ready to go. And I started picking up a lot of gear, including Watcher's Eyes. I picked up the Natural Affinity with Corrupted Blood. And all of this gear, I picked up really early. I also, knowing that a lot of these guys start going into Armor Stacker, I picked up things like the Replica Dream Feather with Resolute Technique early. I picked up the Resolute, or, um, the Onslaught on Hit, not Onslaught on Hit, the Fortify on Hit, Replica Dream Feather early. And I, I pretty much knew from last league where I was going, how I was going to build my character, and what kind of gear I was looking for. A really good example would be if we look at the gear here, we see he's got a shield on. And if we go back a week, we see, oh, he still has a shield on. Does he always get the snapshot with a shield on? I know he doesn't always use a shield. There it is. Yeah, I know he always doesn't use a shield because I talked to this guy too. He only puts the shield on. And this is the this is the thing that's really cool, right? So you see on week five, he's got two weapons on. And if we go to week eight, he's got the shield on. And I asked him what the deal with the shield was. But he said he only puts the shield on for biomes that are giving him a hard time. And this is something that I know that I have learned. And right and now, like, I'm looking at a Dawnbreaker. And this one has Fizz taken as chaos because he's CI. And then I'm looking at these helmets. And I did a video about these helmets. You can actually go back and check it out talking about like why we need these fractures and it's it it all starts to click and it all starts to come together now i know this video is a little long and i know i'm rambling but it's really exciting and it's really interesting and the main point that i want to drive in about this video is do your research spend some time on poe ninja spend some time going through the delve ladder and spend some time looking at different levels of when builds were put together what their gear looked like on week five what their gear looked like on day three where their gear went to on week one one where their gear went to on week four and you can see just just going from like week one to week four we see there was a drastic change in gear so now we're going to backtrack and you want to like spend your time trying to figure out what players did how they did it and when their gear changed what they changed it to so that you can learn there's a lot of information hidden in delve there's a lot of information hidden in poe ninja about players who are building their characters and overall like learning about some of this gives you direction. And if you're looking to trade or you're looking to flip or you're looking to make currency, knowing this information about what Delvers are doing, there's a lot of money to be made selling Delve gear. Like a lot, like a lot. Like like synthesized rings with Grace Implicits, they're very expensive, but they're very cheap early. So if you do your research, you might be able to make some money. You might also learn about defenses. You might also learn about Delve and hey, maybe like me, you fall in love with it and just all you want to do is delve but for now friends i hope you learned something in this video and if you want to talk more about delve or you want to talk about the profits of delve or anything revolving around delve leave a comment down below i know in the next couple of days i'm going to be testing out this really cool farming strategy my buddy gone gave me i think there's a lot of money to be made in harvest but we'll save that for the next video for now friends i'm gonna get this video out to you guys and i'll see you guys in the next one bye